So, the Great Redneck Revolution of 2016 is finally over. There are many lessons to be learned from this failed revolution. The first is, there's a reason why incest is illegal. Now, for all you white supremacist morons who troll my channel, here's the real lesson. Not that you inbred morons will ever understand. Clive and Bundy violated federal laws two years ago. He and his redneck good old boy white trash pals pointed guns at federal officers. They directly threatened the lives of federal agents who were doing their jobs. He and his asshat friends took what was a minor civil dispute over grazing fees and turned it into an armed standoff that he was deliberately trying to turn into a bloodbath all in the retarded hope that they would somehow be able to impress other white nationalist lunatics who would try to copy their own mindless example. And the chief media platform for white supremacists far and wide, Fox News, was egging them on and telling them what patriots they were. For a while, these idiots actually thought they had public support. See, this is what happened after Fox, and specifically Sean's psychopathic racist Hannity, pleaded the case for George Zimmerman. The subsequent verdict helped to trick a certain segment of white males into thinking they had some sort of momentum, and that Fox could actually influence the public to their lunatic delusions. Now some of them are learning they were fooling no one but themselves. I think it bears noting that Fox News' primary demographic are white males, 68 and older, the Cliven Bundy demo. Perhaps now it makes more sense to you why every female anchor on Fox wears high-cut skirts and are always showing off their legs. Gotta cater to that audience, don't we? The decrepit bigots Fox wants to cater to, like Roger Ailes, the 75-year-old fossil who runs that propaganda mill, don't have long to live. So they will flock to any media outlet willing to mirror their hatred. Well, today they've learned that what plays on Fox News doesn't play anywhere else. Clive and Bundy's other retarded kids already got themselves arrested, and now they've got the goat sodomizer-in-chief himself. One very big, very stupid family reunion behind bars. I can only imagine what Cliven's last words were before the feds slapped him in handcuffs. I regret that I don't got but one tinfoil hat to give from a country. Given the circumstances, the feds actually played this one pretty skillfully. They waited until the inbred pals of Bundy and the racist insurrectionists in the media, like Fox, who were egging them on, went away. Let the clowns squatting in that wildlife office annoy the locals and the state to the point they were begging the feds to step in. They waited until the good old boys were isolated, both literally and in public opinion. Then they started cutting the heads off the Hydra. And it's sweet irony, the feds are declaring to everyone that the reason they arrested Clive and Bundy was not because he was going to Oregon, but because of the stunt that he pulled two years ago. This helps to put other redneck revolutionaries on notice. When you let Sean Hannity talk you into pulling some stupid stunt, he's not the one who dies. He's not the one who goes to prison. You do. And unlike Black Lives Matters, there won't be any throngs of hillbillies taking to the streets, demanding Cliven be let out. They're so used to the system giving them what they want before they even ask, that frankly these morons wouldn't even know where to begin to protest. Though I would love to see some of them call themselves besieging the federal courthouse with guns. After all, we all saw how successfully their last armed standoff turned out, now didn't. I, for one, hope that Cliven is put in general population, and although there's not a whole lot of black men in Oregon, one can only hope he finds himself in close proximity to the ones in jail, because the thought of some career convict making him their prison bitch gives me a reason to smile. You know, this is yet another example of why black men need to tool up. From the 4chan cowards in Minnesota to Yal Qaeda in Oregon. Whenever white men find themselves facing guns, they run like cowards.
Now we've seen what a few federal officers can do when they drop the hammer on white supremacy. Just out of curiosity, what would happen if black men finally decided it's time to take control of the situation?